What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another McFarlane Toys action figure wave review on the McFarlane Toys Dune 2021 film action figures. Try and pick these up, you can order them at Big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com, click the link in the description below. And while you're down there, please go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell, and a big thanks to McFarlane Toys for sending out these products over here to review for you guys if you want to see the latest from McFarland toys be sure to check the link in the description below and fair warning over here i don't know dune i'm just gonna tell you right off the bat i have never read dune and i haven't seen any whatever movies or shows that have been out in the past however i do have an interest for dune my whole life people have been telling me to read dune and i'm very curious about the film and there's a lot of actors in the movie that i like some that don't even have figures in this wave yet like zandaya or josh brolin uh, but you can see on the right we have duncan idaho played by jason momoa and then he's from house atreides and then you have paul atreides right there from house atreides there's the baron harkonnen of house of harkonnen there's lady jessica of house atreides and then we have stilgar the freeman right there and then on the side of the packaging they do have slightly different pieces of art right over here you can see that uh, the logos and stuff are just a little bit different and i'm just trying to get them all lined up and then these four figures right here each come with build a figure pieces so you could build a rabbit and then on the back of each of the packaging for these you could see the build a figure your piece that they come with then there's a read up right here on stilgar if you want to read it go ahead and pause it right now here's a read up on lady jessica if you want to read it go ahead and pause it right now here's a read up on the baron harkonnen if you want to read it go ahead and pause it right now here's a read up on paul atreides if you want to read it go ahead and pause it right now and then here's a read up on duncan idaho and then there's nothing really on the top of these but you know they do have slightly different colors you can see the brown right over here uh the baron has a big old window this one man this is a very very hefty figure and then you can see you know green on the top not much more at the bottom of these so let's get Get to it and crack these figures open. <laughs> Each of these figures come with their own dune stand and it just says dune right over there and it comes with a peg that sticks up and then stargar or stillgar sorry and then stillgar comes with this one knife right over here or this blade that has some nice texturing and nice paint fading right over there with the white and the black so i do like that he also comes with this backpack that goes around him right here and he's not the only one that has this and it has some really nice detail and texturing to it i really like those paint apps that looks very clean to me so I'm pleased with that. That looks pretty good, man. And when you put this on the figure, it doesn't really peg in or anything. It just kind of goes around like that and doesn't really clip together, but they do meet each other around the rib cage. But anyway, looking at the head sculpt, Stilgar is going to be played by Javier Bardem, and I'm not really familiar with the actor, but it looks pretty good. I just wish they had multiple tones over the flesh color on these figures. You know, uh, other companies have the photo real tech and stuff. Kind of wish we had something similar like that with this, but you know, the sculpt looks really good, and I do like the eye color paint and everything very bright and has a fairly realistic look to it and i really like how the hair came out right over here so this guy is supposed to be the leader of the freeman and i initially thought he was going to be the main protagonist but as i looked up into more of the other characters i was like oh no wait he may not but anyway uh the rest of the figure looks awesome i love this dry brushing over here that looks so good yeah the different gray colors look really awesome on this and nice sculpted detail throughout look at that nice texturing right there you get a fairly soft material right here for the lower torso this is a harder plastic up top it does help with the articulation which i'll only get into like one or two of them i'm not going to be super thorough about the articulation in this video uh, just because they're all mostly the same but anyway there's looking at the boots and everything and the sculpting detail on each of these is more or less the same too but anyway nice wrinkles over here and the material around the cuffs of these feet or these boots anyway are fairly soft so i do like that and then you get some treads right over here along with the peg holes <laughs> And then here are the two weapons that come with Duncan Idaho. Shout out to Boise, by the way. I haven't been to Boise since 2005, but from what I remember back then, very, very awesome local music scene. But anyway, I do like the sculpt of these and nice touches of silver right there on the top and bottom. 
And at the blade edge right over here, that looks pretty good. So yeah, pretty sweet. He is supposed to be the swordsman of House Atreides, and he is played by Jason Momoa. And yeah, pretty good looking head sculpt. I was able to tell it looked like Jason Momoa right away. So yeah, I think they did a really good job with this. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't I can't see the face without thinking about that time at the uh, San Jose Toy Show. That was just too funny. But anyway, looking at the hair right over here, that looks really good. Nice black over the brown. And then, yeah, looks pretty good. And then, again, the rest of the figure is very similar to what we saw with the Star, the Star, the Stilgar figure, you know what I mean? But nice details throughout on this. I just really like it a lot. But I wouldn't be surprised if they used the same parts. I don't know, we'll do some comparisons later on. But the paint applications throughout, I love that soft tan over gray. It just looks really good. And then the boots and everything look the same. I guess they kind of have the same butts and same backs. Oh, they also have this breathing apparatus thing, or I guess, I don't know what it's exactly for, but, you know, looks like a breathing apparatus. So you can fit that over their face it's not really plugged into anything but you know probably for the dunes right there's probably less oxygen since there's no trees <laughs> And then Lady Jessica comes with this dagger that's very similar to Stilgar's dagger. So uh, they're probably friends. Yeah, so anyway, there's that dagger. A little bit warped right over here. But anyway, this character is played by Rebecca Ferguson. And she has the same backpack piece right over here. It just kind of wraps around and just barely hangs on the same kind of way. Not actually porting on, but eh, it's fairly secure. Again, I love that texturing. That paint detail. Damn, that looks so cool. I really like it a lot. Yeah, it's very dope. But anyway, this character is played by Rebecca Ferguson, who I'm not really too familiar with, but it, it looks like a person. Uh, the hair looks really good over here, though. I do like it. Nice black and brown paint mixed in together right there, just looking very realistic. So I dig that a lot. Yeah, again, you know, if they had a little bit more color tones going on with the flesh color on these, I would really like that a lot. And the paint detail that you're seeing throughout is still very similar to the male figures that we just looked at. Of course, this is a tour different sculpt so they're not reusing the same parts on the female figure but you know the way the paint applications are done here you know very similar so you can see that they don't have that same kind of tan paint over the butt you know and is it like that on the guys too uh yeah yeah the back of the figure actually has less paint for the guys i just gotta do a butt comparison you know so yeah it looks like neither of them have the paint apps on the butts but anyway looking at the rest of the figure she has paint right over here Boots look really good and everything, so I'm liking this. Treads at the bottom of the feet along with peg holes. Oh, and I forgot to mention that she has mind control powers with her voice. So it seems like, you know, they have specific talents and everything in the different characters, right? You have a sword master uh, with Duncan Idaho, and she has her voice mind control powers. So that's pretty sweet. <laughs> And then Paul Atreides comes with the same stand as the rest and these two daggers right over here, these two knives. Looking pretty cool. I do love that gunmetal gray paint right there. And I believe Paul Atreides is the antagonist of this series. It seems like it. He is the heir to the most powerful family in the land of Dune. I'm just calling it the land of Dune. I don't know if anyone calls it that. But yeah, his last name is Atreides, so he's part of that powerful family, heir to the throne. And then the character is being played by Timothy Chalamet. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly but yeah nice hair sculpt over here it looks like the actor i did look it up you know not bad I just wish there's a little bit more paint on the faces and all of these figures it's always kind of tricky to see their faces because they all have these little corona masks right over here but anyway on the side of the head right here not a whole lot of paint variation a lot of brown just a little bit of black mixed in there and some of those creases of the sculpt but very good sculpt regardless and good paint applications and sculpt throughout on the rest of the figure i mean i really like the details right here on all of them they really do pop i just like how that comes out you know that soft dry brushing over uh, those darker colors it just looks really badass so yeah much younger thinner character very unique body mold compared to the other ones he has the peg holes and the treads at the bottom <laughs> And then here are the accessories that come with the Build-A-Figure Rabin, and he's got a whip right over here, looks pretty good, I like the silver paint apps, and then he has this big old blade looking really awesome as well, so that's dope with that silver paint and everything, nice handle right here, I'm digging this. And then Rabin is the main antagonist's nephew, and I think he's the one who does the Baron's evil deeds and all that stuff. So uh, this guy's played by Batista, or Dave Batista anyway, and it obviously looks like him. I don't know, I'm very interested to see how his performance works out in this film, especially because the character appears to be uh, just like the polar opposite of Drax, right? So yeah, nice, you know, detailed dents in the head and everything. I believe those are accurate to the human, right? I don't know, but... 
it looks pretty good to me. I didn't show off the Build-A-Figure process, but here you go. You can see me putting it all together right here. I did heat everything up. And I will say I had the toughest time getting the arms in there. That was really tricky to do. So, you know, uh, it, I don't know if it's 100% necessary to heat up the figure first, but I like doing that, you know, especially because this is my first Build-A-Figure from McFarlane Toys. But anyway, looking at the rest of them, though, it looks really good. I like the details. You get some nice light silver paint throughout over here. And the black is sculpted really nicely. We get some glossy black right over here. It looks like, you know, the color of black changes throughout on the figure. So that's really neat. Add some depth to it. Here's looking at the back. So there you go. And then he's got this whole piece right here with this nice texturing. So I do dig that. Looks very neat, man. Yeah, I like it. So pretty cool. He's not that big for a build a figure. You know, we'll get into size comparisons in a moment, but he does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet. <laughs> Now, the Baron Harkonnen figure is pretty much a statue. Uh, you can see that he comes with this awesome base right over here and has Dune uh, carved right in there. So that's pretty sweet. And I love the paint apps that we're seeing right here for this brick-like flooring. And he does come with a metal rod that goes right into the culo. What rating is the movie going to be? I don't know, but based off of this, it's not going to be PG-13. Okay, all right, enough of that. Anyway, so uh, we get some nice texturing and all that stuff going throughout. Not a lot of posability with this guy but i do like what i'm seeing over here and it is very heavy and this metal rod is very sturdy and it's helpful for posing the figure now he is the antagonist and he's played by stellan starsgard from thor so yeah that's very cool to see him in a villainous role over here but yeah he is the main antagonist of the movie and everything and it looks pretty good yeah i gotta say i do like it very very bulky figure yeah, god this thing is so huge definitely recommend heating this thing up before you port this in there i mean it's really a cool little port by the way i wasn't lying anyway look at that big old gut right there man damn is it trying to look like a charmist or what but anyway you can see the arms right over there look really good nice glossy black paint nice gold the rings on his hand are painted pretty well and everything a little overexposed but you can see the veins and everything right there that's pretty sweet here's looking at the other hand so that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's tough to get a close look at that head sculpt, but I do like it. I think they did a really good job with this. So Selvig, is that the character? Yeah, that's a character that he played, uh, you know, in, in the Thor movies, but in MCU. So that's pretty badass. I like that. And there's looking at the back. Whoa, I love that detail right there. That is very cool. A lot of cool stuff going on right over here. So I don't know if he just like hovers around or something like a Modoc or what. Like, I, I don't get it, but woohoo. He's got his little tootsies right there hanging in the air. So I'm not going to go through the articulation on all four of the figures that came with Build-A-Figure pieces, but I will just do it with this Idaho potato figure. It's pretty much the same on all four of them. Uh, you can move the heads up pretty far, and they will move downward. You get good head pivoting right here, and of course you can turn the head side to side. And then the butterfly joints right there and the armpits work out pretty well. And you can move the shoulders upward and downward, rotate a full 360, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and then you get wrists that turn side to side and they can hinge up and down or horizontally depending on how you have that configured. You get a diaphragm joint that turns side to side. You get diaphragm pivot right there and he'll crunch forward that much and back that much uh, with both joints because you get a waist joint right here with this very flexible material right there. Uh, he'll crunch forward that much and back that much and you do get the waist swivel and waist pivoting. So a lot of range of movement over here. We just do get frustrated with how the hips sit on these figures. Like they're just a little bit low. Like on all of them it seems like they're just a little bit low, right? And her ankle's all twisted. But anyway, uh, not any, uh, well, I guess a little bit of upper thigh swivel up there. Uh, kick forward that much, back, and then you get double jointed knees. And then the ankles do turn side to side. You can move them down. You can move them up a tiny bit. There is ankle pivot there and toe articulation. Now for the Builder Rabin, the articulation's a little bit different. Uh, you can move the head up just that much and he will move his head downward and it pops off so much easier than I'd like. Sometimes it's really hard to find where that uh, peg is supposed to plug into. So it's, eh, I believe it's in there, but yeah. So he'll look down that much and you get a good amount of head pivoting due to his head coming off. And then for the Baron Harkonnen articulation, I mean, you could rotate him here on this Kulo port. He'll move forward and back like that and still stays, which is pretty cool. Uh, the head does not rotate. You only get arms that just swivel forward and back a little bit, not even that much. And then the wrist turns side to side. 
but that's it as far as articulation goes. I mean, this thing is just basically a very hefty statue. And to measure out these figures, they're on average about seven to seven and a half inches tall, right? Uh, yeah, around seven to seven and a half inches. I guess the tallest one is uh, this one, the Stillguard one, about seven and a half. Looking at the Build-A-Figure, that's close to about seven and a half inches too, but the Baron Harkonnen is closer to about 13 and a half, 14 inches tall. And then here's the figures next to another McFarlane Toys figure. We have the DC Multiverse Nightwing from the two-pack. Then here's all the figures next to your average six-inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Badass Spider-Man. And again, no stop motion today. Working on the documentary. Still a lot to do on that documentary. It's coming up this Saturday, so stay tuned. A lot of time goes into these things, so I hope you guys enjoy it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button. If you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And a big thanks to all these people over here that go the extra mile to support this channel via the Tron. If you're interested in the perks and the early access and all the goodies, well, you can check it out. Link in the description below. And this is a fun set of figures. Again, I need to see the movie. I really want to see the movie very much. I have a feeling I'm going to like it. I've been told basically uh, since I was 15 years old that I would like Dune. So I'm really interested to see how I end up digging this movie or if I dig it or if I don't. So I'm very curious about it. A lot of cool actors that I'm looking forward to seeing in the movie. So I definitely want to check it out. And these figures look really cool. Again, I have my little gripes, you know, I like the face sculpts. Just wish that we had a little bit more paint on them and everything. But I like the articulation on them. They look awesome. I like the accessories. And even though I do have my gripes here and there, I think these came out actually pretty badass. And at the price point of around 25 bucks a piece, and then I don't know exactly the price point for the Baron Harkonnen, but at the price point of 25 bucks a figure with the Build-A-Figure piece, I'm gonna give them a sun rating of... It's not too bad. And I'd like to know what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks again to McFarlane Toys for making this review possible. If you want to see the latest in action figure news, you can find it all over at ToyNewsEye.com. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, and I will catch you guys later. Peace! <laughs> Action figures, I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures, it's okay. That's crispy. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.